In the parable that we just heard of the publican and the Pharisee, the Pharisee had a lot to say to God about what a righteous man he was. It was almost like he was saying to God, you're a very lucky God, you know, to have a person like me following you. The, uh, the publican, though, did not have a lot to say. In fact, all he could come up with was, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And this is the prayer that we hear that God heard. This is the prayer that was sweet to God's ears. Now, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, emerges out of one of the Psalms, and it's the one that we're going to look at today. And this is Psalm 50, or uh, 51, 50 in the Septuagint, 51 in the, the Masoretic, the Hebrew numbering. So let's just uh, look at some verses here to get a sense of what this psalm is teaching us. It begins, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your great mercy, according to the multitude of your compassions, blot out my transgressions. Now, it's pretty easy to figure out when you come to an Orthodox church that Lord have mercy is one of our favorite prayers. It's also a prayer that is repeated frequently in the scriptures, frequently in the psalms. The prayer, Lord have mercy, or God have mercy, comes up 16 times in the Psalms. Also, in four Psalms, we are reminded that God's mercy endures forever. The people of God have appealed to God for his mercy and have celebrated his mercy for a very, very long time. Now, in Hebrew, the word mercy has said can also be translated as steadfast love. God's love for us is unfailing. We cannot outsin God's love for us. We shouldn't try. Just take the scripture's word for it. There's never a time when God says, that's enough, I'm finished with you. His mercy, his steadfast love, endures forever. Now, to open the gates of God's mercy, we have to embrace a spirit of repentance. We have to turn away from sin and towards God and his kingdom. And that begins with taking responsibility for our sins. And so in verses 3 and 4 of Psalm 50, Psalm 51, we read, I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and prevail when you are judged. No excuses. No, I was made that way, or the devil made me do it, or nothing like that. We take responsibility for our sins. That's the beginning of opening the doors of God's mercy to us. Now, taking responsibility for our sins can be overwhelming. It's very difficult. We don't like to do it. We shy away from it. And that's why it's always important to remember that God's mercy endures forever. In verses 7, 8, and 9, we read, You shall will sprinkle me with hyssop. I shall be clean. You will wash me. I'll be, I will be whiter than snow. You'll let me hear joy and gladness. The afflicted bones will rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. You see, regardless of how heavy our sins weigh upon us, we will find release in the mercy of God. If you look at verses 16 and 17 of the psalm, it says, If you desired sacrifice, I would have given it. In whole burnt offerings, you will not be pleased. The sacrifice to God is a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart God will not despise. At the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus starts his earthly ministry, he goes into the synagogue and he opens up the scriptures to the prophecy of Isaiah. And he reads Isaiah 61, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. If you've ever felt like that, broken, crushed, like your life was in little pieces all over the ground. Take heart, because you are the kind of person that God sent his son 
to touch with his mercy and to offer the promise of healing and salvation. So having received God's mercy, what's the proper response? What do we do with that? Well, in verses 13, 14, and 15, we read, Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and the ungodly will turn to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation. My tongue will declare your deliverance with joy. O Lord, you will open my lips. My mouth shall show forth your praise. You see, the proper response to receiving God's mercy is to offer him glory and praise. And not just with our words, but more importantly, in our actions. We should never forget that the dox in orthodox means glory. We identify ourselves as people who offer God glory. Why? Because of the great mercy and love and forgiveness he offers us through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, we've said before that in biblical writing, the most important parts of the story, the most important parts of, 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 the, of the event are right in the middle. So you kind of lead up to it, then there's the important part, then you lead out of it. So if we look at Psalm 50, 51, at verses 10, 11, and 12, in the middle of the psalm, it says the following, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and establish me with your governing spirit. The importance here is this. When we turn to God for mercy... What he's offering us is not just to let us off the hook for our sins. It's not like a get out of hell free card. God's mercy renews us completely. In his mercy, his spirit dwells in us to nourish us and to guide us and to strengthen us along the way. You see, divine mercy takes all those broken pieces and puts them back together again but not just the way they were before, but by God's mercy, we end up even better off than we were before. Better off than we ever could be without God. 